Today is a great day for all of us because it is the 16th Sahasrarati. That in 16 beats or 16 movements you reach a higher position in the coil. That it is complete. Sri Krishna is called as a complete incarnation. because he has sixteen petals. This completeness is called as Purna. So now we move into another dimension. The first one was where you got your Self-realization. In the evolutionary process if you see, the animals are not conscious of many things which human beings are conscious of. Like the matter cannot be used by animals for their own purpose. Also they are not conscious of themselves at all. If you see, show a mirror to animals, they do not react to it as if they are in the mirror, except for, I think, chimpanzee. That means we are rather close to them. <laughs> so when we have become human beings, we became aware in our consciousness of many things which were unconscious to the animals. So in their brain, they did not understand that they could put matter into their own use. As human beings, you were all unaware of the chakras that existed within you. So the, your consciousness still was working halfway through unconscious working of the chakras and the conscious working of the mind. You also never felt your autonomous nervous system or your inner organs, how they are working. You did not even feel how you are getting affected by other influences. In human awareness you had achieved how to relate yourself to others and to the nature. But this ego-oriented approach took you away from natural, real life and we became artificial. The whole thing comes from a concept of being artificial. Like they say that it's fashionable to be arrogant, to be snobbish. This is just the opposite of your ascent and evolutionary process because you have lost the power to relate to others which you had gained as human beings. All the organizations which you have formed also on collective understanding are also artificial. Then a movement started that we have to be natural. That is another copying of the artificial. Natural does not mean a primitive personality. Natural is to evolve. The whole purpose of creation is to evolve. So when I started my life, I saw the complicated sastraras. And the more I tried, to solve the complications within my own awareness, the more it became more com more difficult. Because if you see my age, in fifty years 
you can see how much complicated human beings have become. And after opening the Sahastrara, when I come to the West, within these 16 years, I found that they are now incorrigible. Now, the stage for you is laid down to ascend higher. This is the background which I have described to you. But in Sahaja Yoga, you have got your Realization in li one lifetime. And in this lifetime you have to grow. And in this lifetime you have to achieve the highest. So the time is so very short and the background is so dark. You are surrounded by people who are pouring out morning till evening destructive concepts. Now you are the people who have to shoot out much faster than all of them, but a kind of a lethargy. Though you understand that your awareness is very different from them, a kind of a lethargy which does not accept it the way it should accept Sahaja Yoga. Every one of you must think every day, what have I done for Sahaja Yoga today? But you are all still very busy with your jobs of making money, of have relations with people who do not matter at all in Sahaja Yoga. We have to make an all-out effort to rise to that point that whatever we know, we believe in, we act on that and become one with it. You can do that with concepts but not with reality. This is the problem. I see in my own country when they were fighting for freedom, my father himself gave up all his property, gave up his practice with eleven children in the family and we were living in palaces, started living in huts for days together, for years together. But for the gross freedom we'll do anything, but for the subtler freedom the Sahaja Yogis have to do everything that is possible. Be aware to be in your conscious mind all the time that you are yogis. You are the ones who are very much higher than the rest of the humanity. That the salvation of the whole of the humanity depends on you. The purpose of creation will be served by you. So first of all you have to be conscious in your consciousness that you are so important and that's why you were given Realization. How can you be living with your conditionings and with your ego? The conditionings are like this, supposing you are coming from a Christian religion then you must bring that little bit of that religion into Sahaja Yoga or if you are from a Hindu religion, you want to bring some out of that. We have all the essences of these in Sahaja Yoga, the pure essences, but we can't have the gross nonsense. All these things are like dirt over our Sahastrara, which must be shaken off. Though now you are aware, you are aware and conscious of your chakras, you do not keep them clean. Ordinary human beings, if they have clothes, they have houses, they try to keep it clean. But you do not feel ashamed of them also when they are bad. Because you, after some time you also lose the awareness of them. That means you have become subtler, but in your consciousness you are not yet subtle. There are so many things you know more than the people who are not realized as absolute reality. For example, we don't even use vibrations. Whenever it is needed, we don't use it. Or sometimes, mechanically, just like a machine, we start giving bandhans. So you are still unconscious about your chakras, slightly conscious 
when you put your mind to it. Otherwise, in your central nervous system you are not yet so conscious. This is the reason why you do not know why you have to do a thing at a particular time. Unless and until you raise to this, rise to this nirvikalpa state, you cannot go further. For example, I know everything what I do. I can handle any power whenever I want to. I can absorb any negativity I want to. Yeah. I need not absorb any negativity I don't want to. You may be thousands of miles away from me, I know about every one of you. I may not know your worldly names, but I know you as a part and parcel in my being. I also can behave like a human being, absolutely like you, aging like you, using, using spectacles, doing all the things that will make me a complete human being. I have accepted this role consciously, not unconsciously. To me nothing is unconscious. So if you have to be conscious of what you are doing, you have to be alert about it. The first thing that you have achieved is the peace, the peace. But even now I find that peace which should become joy becomes a quarrel. Truth is one. You cannot argue about truth. It's a homogeneous thing. It doesn't quarrel with each other. We are unconscious about our fingers. But when we have to hold something, all of them come together and work it out. So the part of the brain which is working this out, the unconscious part of it, is to be made conscious. That is what evolution is. So now, adherence to any concept is against evolution. You must learn to face the reality, to accept the reality and act a real way. Now, you may say, Mother, this is a miracle. Something happens, this is a miracle. Maybe for the human beings, maybe for Sahaja Yogis also, but not for me, because I know what it is. So to rise above this halfway consciousness, one has to see how you are working it out. The whole system of relating to each other must change completely. That is very important, at least for Western people, because at least in India people know that human efforts lead you nowhere, you have to take to your ascent, I mean oh. the real Indians. Some of them do take advantage of Sahaja Yoga and then disappear. Some of them do, but mostly they know that you have to be conscious of what you have got. So we can see, say that we have got self-knowledge, but we haven't got self-consciousness. Now, for example, you take somebody's name, say, of some great saint, you feel the vibrations are flowing. Also you know why? Because he is a saint. But why not you, the Sahaja Yogis? If your names are taken, why not the vibrations flow? And in this you have greater advantages because the Adi Shakti herself is before you. They didn't have anybody to tell them all these things. But the disadvantage of that is this, that you take it for granted. Now in expression, when we say something, when we express, are we natural? No. Are we doing it from our heart? The consciousness that I'm doing it from my heart 
is what I want you to achieve. Like there are people who work very hard in Sahaja Yoga, others will just take it for granted. They do not want to help, they want everything to be ready-made. That shows that they are not conscious of their own powers of enjoyment. If they do it from their heart, then they will never feel what effort they have put in, they will only feel what they have been blessed with or what they have achieved. The sense of fulfilment and satisfaction will overcome all your problems, especially your left vishuddhis. Now the second stage would be where you will be conscious of whatever you are doing, where there will be no mistakes. Whatever you will do may appear to be a mistake, will turn out to be all right. Nobody is a, a so far like that, so I would <laughs> like to tell you, because some people do feel, where whatever I say of praising the thing, I am saying it to them. Just now, the stage at which we are, we are still making lots of mistakes because we are not self-conscious. In a gross way, we understand this word self-consciousness like this, a person has to go for the interview, then he'll select his suit properly, he'll comb his hair properly, before going he'll clear his throat, self-conscious. But when it is the question of your ascent, are we alert? Or we are taking it for granted that mother is just now going to give us a nice bath, put us in the cradle and take us there. This is being childish. You have to mature in your ascent. Now you may say, what should we do? Face yourself every day. In reality, see how much time you spend about mundane worries and how much about your ascent. Have you left everything, all your worries to God Almighty? Have you completely jumped out of your background? Have you come Did out all the way, leaving everything that was nonsensical? And how do I relate to others? How do I talk to others? who are Sahaja Yogis. So you should understand the time limit. You must understand your greatness and you must understand how you people are chosen for the highest work in this creation. So now there's no time for lethargy. Now you have to rise and awake. Today is the day when I hope you have to jump into Nirvikalpa. But only by effort you will stay there, otherwise you will again slip down. So go through this lecture again and again and do not think about it. Don't think that it is for somebody else, it is for you, for all of you, each of you. And you must know yourself how far you are going every day. You are not robot, ro robots, you are not machines. You are evolved through evolutionary process. And through evolutionary process only, you have to achieve the higher personality. So whatever we may do, or whatever may be all right, it's you who have to show the results. We may take your sahasrara to a great enlightenment, but again it will collapse. So, you have to know that whatever heights you are brought to, it is you who have to maintain it with full willpower and action. May God bless you. This lecture 
is a concern of your mother. Do not take it as anything ill. I could not have said this even two years back or one year back, because you are at a stage where I can say these things to you. You can understand it, but it has to become your consciousness. The stage has reached to understand, but it should become your consciousness. By today's happening should become if you keep it there. So again, may God bless you.